actually, I want to create a content which which actually includes an HTTP server, WebSocket server, playing with the whole power of the uh, Beast library, Bruce library also. But this can be a little bit um, complex for, for um, the new beginners, let's say. But so then I want to create a simple WebSocket server application with the Synchron one in this content. So I will also show you some uh, tools how we can use to test our application, uh, how we can sniff the WebSocket um, the packages, the uh, you know TCP packages, whatever we will send or get. Yeah, this will be quite simple um, content, some kind of you know part one. Then the second one and the uh, following ones, let's say. There will be other um, tutorials and which are still about on WebSocket uh, using the Beast. Also, I will show you how you can create a really powerful applications, web applications using the C++. This is really important and funny that I just found. <laughs> oh, that is a thing right now, but uh, okay, then let's start. So before start, um, there are a bunch of information about this WebSocket protocol. You can read it here. This is the uh, number RFC 6455, the WebSocket protocol implementation, actually the explanation here, how it should be implemented, simply you know, the generic protocol. So um, if you want, you can read, good luck. And there are a lot of uh, informations that I didn't read more uh, all of them, actually. So it's not necessary for the story, but for the information. The, the development package we will install, actually I already installed it, but I will show you which development package you should install. Um, simply grab um, libboost all dev. Um, let's check. Okay, single O, uh, this should be double O. Then I have this one, but it depends on your version of the Ubuntu yet, so th this version can be different. So you can also simply search with the sudo also, sudo apt um, search boost all the yep, this one I'm using right now you can simply install with an apt install lip boost all dev but I'm not doing this right now, I already installed it so that is all for the package, uh, the beast also is installed with the leap boost all the. I mean, if you do this, you installed every packages. There are a lot of packages that actually, if probably you don't you don't need all of them. But the beast also came with this package. Okay, beast is the WebSocket implementation, WebSocket part of the boost uh, in the boost actually. Simply beast is the part of the boost. Okay, then. Um, Let's go to the Visual Studio. I created a simple example WebSocket CPP here. And we are starting right now to coding simply. We will include actually before start. OK, when you install this all dev package, you install out of uh, header files, the templates actually, right? Not CPP files. The, the, this, is, this is the actually the reason of this. Um, the boost libraries are header-only files because because they are templates, right? So we can check here also somewhere. I just put here in the templates, for example. Yeah, it's also written here. The definition of template must be visible, right? So that means um, there is no definition in the CPP file. There is no CPP file actually. All the definitions because of the template um, situation, template structure, all the definitions should be inside the header file. So that is why, which is why template libraries typically provide all template definitions in the header. Most boost libraries are header only. Yeah, that is the thing. That is why you will have a lot of header files when you install these development packages. So there is no binary, there is no CPP file. Okay. So let's um, include the necessary header files. It's a good thing here. Um, Beast encapsulated all the uh, boost, actually, SIO uh, header files. That's why when we include boost, beast, and core, and this is for core, and 
Also, the left socket we need here. I will not um, include the another SIO header because it's already I think in, uh, included in this headers. So that is why no need. Okay, but, but we will use the SIO uh, for socket applications in the next. Okay, I think we will uh, need IS stream. And string to print something and threads to run multiple um, clients, right? Threads. Okay. So simply, I am just writing stretch, so that is why it will be really simple. So First, we need an IP address, right? Um, I will use the loopback IP address here. I'm in the virtual machine that I will show you also in the next, how we can um, connect this IP address using some of the tool, WebSocket client tool. This will be the WebSocket server, right? This is a simple one, which is the Synchron WebSocket server, actually. So simply address um, here. Okay, let's not, let's, first time not use the namespaces to understand then i will add the namespaces later simply boost as I o, yeah we see it and net no then ip address i think yeah ip make address this one nice i remember zero zero one this is the loopback address right so and also the port number i need here should be simple um, then integer right actually constant port we should static cast and std to change to integer to string i'll put something like that but it doesn't matter you can put whatever you want right now we're in the local environment that be no problem. So now uh, we will create an, uh, we need actually IO context. IO context uh, calls on an operating system to perform the connection operation, the necessary operation, for example. It doesn't matter for socket application, for um, serial application, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do in the as IO, you need an IO um, context simply, let's say. But okay, that's not. Okay, it's, it's cool. Let's let's continue. And again, boost as IO. It should be uh, exist directly. IO context. IOC. I will run only one thread. This is the thread number here. All right. Let's see it. Concurrency hint. Suggestion to implementation on how many threads? Yeah, this is the number of threads that I just put here. The one. Uh, if you are in the virtual machine, don't uh, put something non, you know, much number here because uh, it can crash your environment. So for test, okay, just put one, then you can increase later. Then we will simply create an acceptor for the TCP, right, for socket application. And for this, simply boost as I O the namespace to access the IP. And it in the TCP acceptor, yeah, this one acceptor. So we will pass. Okay, why it is not showing? Whatever, as I remember, it should be. Uh, I see it should be passed for first an argument. Yeah, then it should be the address and port number like this address and port number okay then yeah we need a while loop here i will create two while loops it's not a good idea actually for what simple application it's okay infinite for while then we will 
with a socket connection here, right, in the flow while loop. Then we will um, throw a thread here and the attached thread after this. So simply, okay, let me let me um, create some namespace here for the TCP um, namespace. Actually, let's not, just using the TCP maybe to a better idea. Uh, boost zero IP TCP yep, exactly. Then anymore boost as your IP TCP we can use boost as your TCP I can remove this one and I can put here TCP socket now I am ready to use socket here socket that needs IO context IO C that we created before and we need to accept it, right? Accept, 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 yep, this one. And socket we will pass simply. So when uh, we need and when we get the new socket uh, opening, some request, right? We will wait here until here, then we will accept the socket. So we can test, for example, here socket accepted, something like, I don't know. Compile it simply, I will use a command line here. I will give the uh, path, the libraries, the headers, where our headers exist, the direct path within minus i. It is in the USR, uh, includes boost and which is the name example websocket cpp let's try yeah there are some errors let's check let's check Ooh. oops this is forget it eh, sorry let's compile again actually we will we will get another error Let's compile again. Yeah, this is, yeah, this one here, right now we are here. This is related with uh, Pthread library. So we need to call, when we try to compile it, we need to call the Pthread like this. If you don't need it, if you don't have a Pthread, you should install it. Just uh, simply search the Pthread, that will be easy. Let's compile again. Okay, it's compiled, nice. But uh, I will give some name. Uh, WebSocket, let's say, to the binary. Okay. Now um, we have, actually we have an example that we can run, right? WebSocket, okay, there's no problem. It's, so it will consume the lot of CPU power. Uh, actually, it's waiting here right now. There's no problem. So let's check, for example, let's open a new terminal. Um, we can simply connect from here, right? It can, it can create a TCP connection, socket connection here. We can test it. Eighty-eighty-three, right? No. Okay, I forget to. Put an end line here. Let's compile again. Run it. Corner compile. Yeah. As you see it, uh, when we try to open a so co connection, right as a client then socket upset it simply but it asks out of time so there is no um, response right so that is the problem but yeah we will handle this don't worry so let's stop it okay let's continue and socket accepted yeah let's keep it that way then um, after this of course we will create another thread here right we will deattach it simply STG thread I'm using here 
And the normal example in the in the in the internet in the Boost uh, website, you can find with a function. It's called a function. They called inside function, but another function. But uh, I'm using the here in a different way. So we will play a little bit. I will use um, probably the, that you will see right now the uh, lambda expression, right? I will not use any other uh, function to keep it simple. The example simple. Simply detach like this, it will create another, uh, you know, thread, right? It will not block the main ap application. That means we can connect with a number of clients. Okay, nice. Then simply um, using the lambda expression. Mm. Yeah, like this. And here we should move the socket here. We cannot copy, we cannot pass a reference directly socket, right? This one socket here. So that is why um, I will create something like QSTD using move simple socket. Okay. But it is, yeah, this should be a uh, constant anymore. Whenever you capture something with the um, lambda, then this should be constant. So there are a few ways right now for this example. We can we can put here a mutable to update it, right? Then I will show also another way for this. Okay, it's correct. Okay, let's try to compile until now to see there is any problem yeah there's no problem nice so let's continue then here here we should create a stream websocket stream that means websocket beast actually right beast websocket no no, it is not. Why? I cannot see it. WebSocket. Stream. I cannot see it. I don't know why. Because of the Visual Studio, I think. Or do I... Something wrong. Beast WebSocket, right? Beast, yeah. Whatever, it's correct. Then... TCP socket here we need this will be uh, actually stream you can find here a lot of functions this is the stream that I will focus to accept functions and there are a few functions I will talk about with you the stream the set option and the end of the video probably yeah, you can read a whole here asynchron read asynchron write that this example will not use any of them actually this will be not a asynchron application so we will just write and read right that is here should be a write and read whatever so let's back websocket then um, we will simply right now this is not constant Q, we can use directly Q, I think, here. But also, of course, uh, we should still move it with the STD move. Yeah, I mean, we cannot, any, it doesn't matter, even if uh, we, we here move this uh, socket to Q, then otherwise we have to move again, right? It's not copyable. Yeah, let's compile and try to see if it's correct or not. Yeah, there are some problems. SDVS, SDVS, not an example. Three. Okay, I forget here boost. Sorry. <laughs> no, it should work. Yeah, I forget here boost. Let's try to compile to see is there any problem. Yeah, if there's a problem, nice. Then continue. 
then continue and now we can accept the WebSocket handshake right we also um, change a little bit the first handshake for for um, if he uh, protocol actually the per message deflate header is called and I will show you actually in the, in the end of this if I not for if I not, uh, if I will not forget it but then we s accept simply to accept the WebSocket connection okay then here we will put the while loop another while loop here we are in still a thread right one one not this one and we need here some kind of container buffer actually it's called in the beast there are a few buffers the different buffers that we in the buffer types here you can read well this in this simple example like you can use one of them it's not necessary but um i will use for example right now the flat buffer okay but i've tried also the multi buffer you can use it also it doesn't matter but i I'm, i will use it and then a flat buffer i'm gonna use it then here boost beast flat buffer here see buffer we can call like this then we s read buffer to hold the incoming message from the client and uh, let's let's try to print it auto we can do it direct right now boost beast there are buffers to stream function that we can use directly uh change convert it as a printable object right as a string of kind kind of the character array or whatever buffer C data, yeah, this one. And let's print simply and out, let's say, std end line. Let's not remember, forget it. <laughs> and yep, that is all right now to, to, to try it, okay? But it's not the correct way. Let's compile again. I hope there will be no problem. Yep then run the example so as a client tool i will use here in the chrome there's an extension it's, it's called an extension i think right this um websocket smart websocket client chrome extension yeah you can find simply smart uh, websocket client that you can install it i installed before right so it simply give you an ability to test your application simply it will it, it will work with your application with your test so simply this is uh let me a little bit make it bigger to read easily so this is ws right without a security right now so this is an non-secure connection that we will see with also the wireshark i will show you a few things so for this loopback uh, ip address and the port number okay we should write like this then we can connect it yeah socket apps accepted and it's connected right now it's nice it's working so let's try to send something let's send some string and we'll let's see it's print or not yes yeah, prints it's, it's working so this is the simple that's not the finished of course it's not echo back anything right now we will also see the echo message here what we sent this client so we can uh, sim actually, it's, a, it's a simple idea actually for this uh, websocket with a boost with a beast also especially um to tell a few things actually for the mutable okay it's not a good idea to make the mutable here if it's not a good idea actually for uh, everything here inside this container we can also remove this right there are a few also notations it's a bit really better like um, this one as i remember let's try to compile and see this one one of the notation and here then yeah there is no there is no um, const cast number table so we have to write to to use the uh, constants we have to const cast the queue anymore right here is the move in the std move 
const chest Oops, tcp socket this is socket right tcp socket but uh what was the yeah, tcp socket we already include the namespace uh, using i mean and simply here we should the reference put the parentheses are important yep that is all let's try to compile it again no there are problems um, what is the problem here right yeah this should be const guest let's compile again okay okay let's clean the screen okay there is no problem we can also use like this so be careful whatever you uh, capture here right it will be const even if this socket so also though we have to move it it's not copyable it's not possible to copy it uh, you can compile it but when you try to run the example you will get some um, access violations kind of weird um, happening things I don't know what will happen we can also use like this okay in the C thread okay then let's let's try to echo back uh, what we will get from the client simply to do that we can simply ws write function and directly we can type data here buffer data this is the usage for this flat buffer okay and okay that is the thing actually let's try to compile again and run the example go to the client connect it yeah socket accepted and i think the websocket client is also accepted send it yeah it is echo back directly we can send whatever we want as you see I don't know whatever you typed it will be a callback and you can see here simply so this is the uh, okay this is a call server simple one synchron one we can also let's try to connect with another one yeah, you can also see connect with another client this is working right now nice but there is a problem so we, we didn't uh, implement a disconnection so when I disconnect it when I click click this this will uh, throw an error actually some kind of probably uh, access violation or some memory corruption let's try oh yeah throwing an instance this uh, the thing is here uh, this connection should be implemented as a try catch mechanism so simple implementation should be like in the track catch here but of course it should be here and let's oops. okay this is a std exception no this should be beast but the beast boost beast right boost beast you can call the namespaces you can import the namespaces if you want but for this example um, i'm just playing like this but you can find uh, the, some examples that i wrote for this uh, tutorial and below the video the link you can find simply don't worry about it um, boost beast what what i told you yeah system error system error this one constant reference error something but system error right that's s a and here s a of course um this should be that should be a if condition which is not equal to 
web socket boost beast web socket white boost beast web socket error yeah it's a little long it's a good idea to call import the namespaces but whatever and closed see here this is the closed this connection then we can simply should break here right to to release the threat right to release the actual while loop for the break i mean then let me copy this here whatever actually we can simply put break here yeah that is all and yeah okay come on let's Put here uh, what we will get also the code message will be the way to call to print actually and uh, let's use std online okay let's try to compile again let's see uh, is there a problem in what is an acidic member what is that I forget the parenthesis. I should. I should prepare before the video. Next time the code maybe. But it's much more, uh, you know, the real writing. That's ah, okay. Web socket. Then try connect it. Disconnect it. Connect it. Disconnect it. Yeah, it's okay. Right now it's working. There is no um, throwing anything. See? Let's connect again and send something. Say something. Say some. Oh, this is the, some. Uh, don't worry about this. This is right with the smart WebSocket application. Say something. Something. Ooh, with double T. Yeah, it's simply work. Say something. Disconnected, connected. Nice. It's working. This is the simple client uh, server, actually, WebSocket server application. So um, what we can do right now, OK. OK, I, as I told you, I don't know, actually, I couldn't remember <laughs> did I told you or not. There should be a handshake in the WebSocket protocol. We can change, we can adapt this handshake because there, is some, uh, there are some uh, configuration in the handshake, OK? which is actually the code um, for the comparison. Yeah, this can be. But this is called a per message deflate header, the header one. We can simply play with this header. This is the you know get method and get. Uh, and after this get, we can play this strings here from the code. So to do that, um, simply we will use this should be, let me check, I couldn't remember the set option. This should be, yeah, the set option. Set the per message deflate extension options. I will simply right now put some text there, okay? But it will not affect anything uh, as I understand. But I mean, we cannot see the effect here. But just uh, if you want, you can search on the internet. This will be, uh, right now, th there are some default numbers. For example, as a version, uh, it will print. 266 for this we can check for example right now uh okay i will install before the wireshark here you can also install it but i will not show you here this is not the content of this video okay let's try to connect again disconnect it okay so this will be the loop back here uh, you can to filter it for websocket you can simply type the websocket here okay it will filter the packages so you shouldn't see all the packages here. Then I'm using the loopback uh, as an IP address. I didn't put any IP address right here. Just an, uh, I choose the loopback and I give the uh, WebSocket. OK, this is took some queries that I will clean them. Yeah, continue the saving. And I will connect it. Oops. Yeah, let's let me stop it. These are the handshake right now between the client and our um, binary, our server. So this is this is switching protocols. See here, 
and there are some bunch of information see per message here it's written per message deflate here the protocol and also the response here the boost b is 266 this is the default string which came from here we can play with it we can change this we can change for example as an example this text here this uh, switching protocols means uh, actually is a status code that is actually used as i understand uh, for a server to indicate tcp connection that the tcp connection is about to be uh, used for different protocol i mean if you want to use different there are a lot of protocols that you can you can check the header file for this in the beast there are a lot of different protocols that i don't know all right now i'm just trying to show you the the way how you can update this header okay so let's go back again here before before the here the read i think or oh, actually set option this should be the before accept here we will simply um, call set option but um this is this is not enough we will need a stream based decorator to decorate it web socket i'm not going the deep for this stream base no because i again forget the boost here the stream base decorator um decorator decorator okay why it's not working boost because i will forget again the beast boost beast web sockets and um, stream base decorator simply then we can put here another lambda expression to update the string yeah what a good notation i put this we will not capture anything as i remember boost beast web socket response type reference response type response set yeah don't use like this okay just include the namespace import the namespace in the beginning of this um, file and we can put here right now directly the string for example again oh okay this is not uh, enough i forget okay come on the definition give me and there is a response type lambda overloaded there should be a, a field server we have to call beast http field field server field server but i cannot see here set a file field set a field value removing any other instances of the field first removes any values yeah okay the field the name and the value okay we want to field the server we want to simply update this header here let's compile again okay let's run go to there again the client and yeah we need again sniffing saving yeah, we are safe right now connected yeah i got it 
but I got a little much also. Let's, let's try to remove them and disconnect. Remove them, connect again. Yep, these are stop it. And in the switching protocols header, yeah, here see the string we update it. But because of course this, there is no big problem right now, but it's not a good idea. I mean, not a correct way. I just try to show you the possibility of the, uh, the updating this header for compression for a different protocol usage if you need. Okay. Okay, I think that is all for this um, tutorial in a simple manner. But uh, let's try. Let's go to Google and um, WebSocket client boost beast. Simple explain this one. Yeah, let's go to there. We can directly add the user namespace is the better way. Let's try this example with our server. All right, let's copy this and open a new one here, paste it. Web socket client CPP. What this one is another example web socket, but whatever. This is the uh, funny names. And okay, usage, whatever, whatever. Okay, we can directly, I think, compile it. Let me add another. Oh, I couldn't. The attach it here. Ah, the attach the terminal. And this one, WebSocket example. This should be WebSocket client and WebSocket client, let's say. That's a binary name client. Okay, I hope there will be no problem. Okay, nice. And run the WebSocket client. Um, it's asking, let's check, yeah, client echo server, it is the server, but we will put here an IP address, right, so the loopback IP address, zero, zero, 001, and port number is 8083, and uh, string, like this, I think, string, some, yeah, it's great. Uh, open the socket with the WebSocket, sense the data, and close the connection. Right, it's working. Another, another stream. Right. Nice. So that is that is all for this tutorial. In the next one, uh, we will focus the asynchronous application, but with more also the object-oriented way, uh, which is actually it is written on the internet. And then I, I will I will I will um, write I will code again this one with a line by line with an explanation, right? As much as possible, clear. I don't know. Yeah. Um, let me let me check if I forget something to tell you. I don't know. Yeah, you can write some comment or whatever you want. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> See you again, bye.